Welcome to daily physics conversation. Today we're gonna go over reflection and refraction. It strikes a mirror. What happened? This is what do you, what do you call this one? A laser. Incident ray. All right. Uh, right. Incident ray. All right. Isaac, can you come over here and construct a normal line? All right. Raf, can you come over here and construct an incident angle? Isaac, can you come over here and construct a, a reflected angle? Reflected ray. Okay, very nice. So this is theta r, right? Okay. So theta i is equal to theta r. All right. So I'm going to give you both of you. I'm going to give you two problems. Let's see who can do it faster. Uh, however, when you solve this problem, make sure you use the normal line. So I have mirror one. Okay. I have mirror one and mirror two. Mirror one. Mirror two. Okay. I have an incident ray coming over here and incident ray bounce off and incident ray uh, finally uh, bounce off like this. I want you to find. Uh, what is the reflected angle for this one? This is. Uh, you can't find that without any given information. I will do that. Um, so I have a mirror one and mirror two. Okay, and I have an incident angle. Strike this. Strike this. Bounce up. You're gonna find x. Uh, let me give you some information. I'm going to give this one 50. I'm going to give this one 30. And this is uh, this is 130. Measure from the normal, which is perpendicular. So that means 30 plus this is 90, which makes this 60 degrees. Theta i equals theta r. So let's reflect it on the other side. is also 60 degrees. Now 60 plus this must be equal to 90 degrees. So this, which is not necessarily the reflected angle, is 30 degrees right here. Now the total sum of angles has to be 180 degrees. So 30 plus 130 plus this angle is 180. 30 plus 130 is 160. So 160 plus x is 180, which means x over here is 20 degrees. This is not the incident angle, however. If we draw this normal line right over here. If this is 90 degrees, so that means these two angles must sum up to 90, which would make this obviously 70 degrees. So then th theta i equals theta r, so this is also 70 degrees, which makes this right over here also 20 degrees. So uh, we have this angle is 50 degrees, and we have to find the angle that the final ray is reflected at. So first, I'm going to draw the normal line here. Okay, so this is 50 degrees, and this is a normal. And this has to be 40 degrees. Okay, by the principle of reflection, this also has to be 40 degrees because theta i is equal to theta r. Okay, now if this is 40 degrees, then this right here, it's not drawn to scale, but this has to be 50 degrees, right? Because this is a right angle. Okay, now this is 50 degrees and we have another right angle here. So this has to be complementary, 40 degrees. Now I'm gonna draw another normal line here. And because this is normal, this is 90 degrees, you know this is 40, so this has to be 50. Now, by the principle of ref uh, reflection, theta i is equal to theta r, so this is also 50. And because this is 90 degrees, this has to be complementary to this 40 degrees. Why you have to find that one? You don't need to. Oh, I thought that's the No. Okay. I want the angle for that, the last ray. So 50 degrees. Yeah, 50 degrees. Yes. Theta. If the light enters, from a small n to the big n, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Then theta incident is greater than theta refracted. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a, what are we gonna call? We're gonna call a boundary. We're gonna call a small n, we're gonna call big n. We're going to call air, we're going to call water. We know that n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1.33. Okay, 
I am gonna give you a red uh, a red light a red light what is the name of this red light and incident ray strike the boundary Isaac can you draw the normal can you draw the incident angle if you can use the other color that would be great let me see this is working okay this works oh that works yeah purple works okay no okay then work work the green okay incident angle the incident angle is once again natural from the normal which is perpendicular right over here and the incident angle is right here okay you are not done yet okay uh can you now draw make sure you put this hypothesis in action can you draw a refracted can you draw fast uh, a refracted ray so our hypothesis is that theta i is greater than theta refracted so that means hypothetically this is okay i have read i have read so this is going to be uh, so the line has to be somewhere over here which is below this so for example the refracted array could look like this for this very nice and it doesn't change the color mm -hmm. okay light uh, light changes the medium doesn't change the color so you're still going to use the red mm -hmm. okay all right okay so um okay very good uh now i want you to find i want you to find actually the angle uh what angle you want i'll give you this one 30. now you're gonna find what is this one what to do is use Snell's law n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. so here our n1 is air which has an index of refraction of one okay so the index of refraction of air is one then our incidence angle theta 1 is 30. the index of refraction of water is 1.3 and this is what we're trying to find the refracted angle okay the sine of 30 is one half uh, one half is 1.33 times sine of the refracted angle so that means sine of the refracted angle is one half over 1.3 so one half over 1.3 the answer is 22 22 okay so that means the refracted angle is 22 degrees as you expect does this obey the law Yes, no. the incident angle is bigger than the refracted okay. Good. angle. The second thing you're going to prove that. So, uh, Isaiah, can you find the both velocity? Yeah. Okay. So, the index of refraction is basically a ratio of the velocity of air in that current substance divided by the the velocity of light mm -hmm. and, and the mm -hmm. current substance divided by the velocity of light in a vacuum which is just c or about three times ten to the eight wait no it's n is c over v c over v oh. okay so it's always greater than one right. so it's uh, just a measure of the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in that substance so it's kind of like a measure of optical density of sorts. So you have uh, that the velocity in air. You can do it over v. there. I, I put it over there. So we know n equals c over v. So v n equals c or v equals c over n. So that's just going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 over n. So in this case, we are given that n equals 1. So we just have this. In, in the other case, we're given n is 1.33. So 2.3. Okay. Final thing you're going to do tonight is, okay, Isaac, thank you. Final thing you're going to do. Meet us for a second. You put that in your list. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. we have to. Yeah. That's fine. Lambda air and lambda water. Isaac, which one would be bigger? Make a hypothesis. Well, V equals lambda F. Why is there any reason for it to change? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, lambda would be different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. they so have, I thought you said the color wouldn't change. Yeah, the color the depends color, on frequency. The color oh. doesn't change. The frequency. Oh yeah, same. you're right. Okay. But the speed is uh, faster in uh, air. Yeah. Faster in air. So that means the wavelength should be right. Bigger. So which one would be bigger? Lambda air. Lambda air will be bigger. Come, find lambda air. You find one way, I can find other way. There is five way to find it. Okay. okay. So, uh, v is equal to and Isaac, you're gonna tell us big question. Mm -hmm. We usually say yeah. if lambda goes up, frequency go down. Lambda goes down, frequency go up. How? Why the frequency yeah. doesn't change here? V is f lambda, so that means lambda is p over f. So lambda. It's a red line. Is, red light. Yeah. P, uh, C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And red light and is 3.84. Okay, 3.84. Which is 790 nanometer. Yeah, 790. Okay, in the air. Okay. And in the, in the water, uh, let's see. So in the water, the speed is uh, 2.25 times 10 to the 8. Isaac, can you find it out? Because we don't know exactly what it is. So just do 2.25 over 3.84. Looks like it's 0.59. Yeah. Point 0.6 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, so 6 times uh, 10 to the minus 7. And that's 6 times 10 to the minus 7. That's so like it's 600, 600 nanometer. nanometer. Okay. And All right. See this one has okay. So I have a big question for you. Go back. Why the color remains same? So the color remains the same because the frequency remains the same. And now you might ask, why doesn't the frequency because of the light beam change? Up and down, frequency, also go up and down. frequency should also go up and down. Now here the velocity also changes. The velocity is not fixed, right? Yeah. Because here when you go into the water, the velocity of the light seems to slow down. So now the the lambda and the frequency don't have to go in opposite ways now when the lambda goes down the velocity also goes down right so the frequency doesn't have to change i think we're go going over one cycle of the wave is uh, just getting smaller it's not like the time for one cycle is getting bigger that would make no sense so uh anyway uh, this is the whole thing about if a lambda goes up, frequency goes down. The inverse proportion is when we're talking about uh, one fixed medium, not when we're changing mediums. When we're changing mediums, the velocity is affected. So that means that lambda or frequency, one of, or the other, has to go down uh, without uh, affecting the other one. So in this case, lambda goes down.